music. I see the chains falling. I see the chains falling. Make that declaration, declaration, declaration. I see the chains falling. I see the chains falling. Chase. I don't know whether you are here. If you are here, you have pain on the chest. 
touch that particular part of the chest the power of God is going to come upon you and the forces of evil that are you that, that, that plant such things in men shall be by faith prophetically touch those eyes and the Lord will move through the Lord has power father as you are seeing them touching their eyes is by faith and father I ask that the specialist angels that operate on eyes I command order in those eyes in the name of Jesus every force of the enemy that has been planted in their eyes lose your hold now in the name of Jesus I rebuke you by fire I command every infirmity that is to do with the eyes I command every infirmity that is to do with the eye problems everywhere in the name of Jesus to come out now in the name of Jesus every force every power that is bringing harassment to that but is happening already angels of fire let them move into operation to touch every person if you feel vibration is okay that's the power of God coming upon you now if you feel shaken is okay that's the power of God coming upon you if you feel your body is receiving strength if you have heaviness up over your heart any power of heaviness every spirit of heaviness that has been unleashed by the devil against these your children I command it to die in the name of Jesus let it be lifted upon your life let it be lifted upon your life let it be lifted upon your destiny let it be lifted in the name of Jesus if you are here you have problems with your stomach touch that part and you're gonna get healed now we're going to get testimonies now lift up your hand if you are there you have issues with your stomach you have issues with digestion you have issues with how your intestines operate the power of God is here now in the name of Jesus Father we release an anointing of healing and proclaim peace and declare that that person is healed now be it online be it here we enforce we and we command every power that is assigned to oppress that dummy lose your hold now in the name of Jesus and you infirmity foul spirit the spirit of infirmity the spirit that oppresses that harasses hear the word of the Lord you have no right to be in that place this is the habitation of God and we speak order into your digestive system we speak order into your large intestine we speak order in the entire tummy in the name of Jesus and we declare you healed we declare you healed and we command every plant my father has not planted to be rooted out in the name of Jesus oh Lord we thank you for you are the king of kings you are the Lord of Lords you are the mighty God hallelujah yes you are the Lord Oh, yes, you are. Rise up on your feet if you have been, you know, touched. Yes, you are. Yes, you are.
chapter 9 verse 35 to 36 I want to show you the works of the devil is to harass the helpless and it's the deliverance hour you are welcome if you have not been here before but Matthew chapter 9 if you can put it up verse 35 can we all read one two three go everybody read on the screen Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing how many diseases and sickness the next verse the next verse one two three go like sheep without a shepherd somebody shout hallelujah say my god is a god of compassion the truth is that when god looks at the helpless and the harassed the first thing that comes to him is to have compassion upon their lives god is a god of compassion and when he looks at those that are without sheep it means that there is a hedge that has been removed from such people because they are downtrodden they don't know what to do being without a shepherd is to do with the direction because the shepherd is the one that guides the sheep where to go are we together when god looks at the helpless and the harassed it is that he might guide them to the direction where their destiny is and now notice that the thing that god is there is not the cause of that confusion in the lives of those people the bible says he was teaching in their synagogues and healing everywhere he was moving about doing ministry and the bible says when he saw the clouds he noticed that there is something that they didn't have one of the things they didn't have is that they didn't have direction they didn't know where to go and if there is an easy target for the devil is a man without direction is a woman without direction is a destiny without direction is a child without direction that man that woman that marriage becomes the easy target of the enemy are you following me when there's no direction then the enemy can give you direction when there's no direction then the powers of darkness can now give you direction that's why david was very critical he was very serious when he wrote psalm 23 one of the things the shepherd does put it up psalm 23 i think verse 5 you know if you can put it psalm 23 verse 5 so i show you david an old testament man realized and recognized the need for direction and he was very particular as to the person that gives that direction psalm 23 verse 5 if you have it please put okay you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup runs over the next verse now show show where he says surely it is to do with the leading to lead you to the green pastures show that verse look at it can you read it one two three me makes me to do what uh -huh. the next the next phrase can you see that so as human beings we need a place where is life water is the presence where there is life it symbolizes where you know you can get derived strength from because he's speaking in the context of a desert so jesus looked at the people and the bible says that when he looked at them they were harassed and helpless this is the state of man since the fall the word harassed there it means to be mangled up it means to be torn apart it means to be cut to the bone the word harassed there it means to be totally finished and there are marriages that are like that there are lives that are like that here harassed and helpless 
But the Lord is here. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Lord is here to help you. Because he's in charge of destinies. The word helpless there is actually also to throw to the ground. In the Greek word of helpless is to throw to the ground. So Jesus saw that these people, you know, the way the Father sees us, he saw them as victims of the enemy. He saw them as victims of powers of darkness. When you are without a shepherd, it's like if there was a hedge, they have now come, remove that hedge, and you remain vulnerable. So any attack can deal with you. Yeah? Any attack can deal with you. The devil, you see, the harassment is the nature of Satan harassment he harasses churches he harasses individuals he harasses marriages he harasses families even harasses the nation and if he can get you without a cover then he can do a lot of damage against your destiny lift up your hand lift up your hand say father in the name of Jesus deliver me from any form of harassment satanic harassment ancestral harassment harassment from evil spirits harassment from powers of darkness in the name of jesus please if you came here to you see it's by default there's going to be a funeral i know that and i see some people are not serious the thing that is happening here now you better listen to this because this particular anointing that is here can put to an end all the harassment you have been having in your life. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you. So that harassment is when he sees there is no cover. Show me Job chapter 1 verse 10. And I show you why I'm saying there is a protective hedge. Some of you are surviving because of that hedge alone. It's because your husband is probably born again. It's because it's your mother that is covering you in prayer. That's why you are still alive. Look at it. Job chapter 1 verse 10. 1, 2, 3, go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it's talking about a man called job you know the story he said have you not put a hedge around him because now there was a conversation and god was saying this man is a good man i know what he can do satan said no just touch anything about this man you're going to see what is what will happen and then the other say, have you not put a hedge around him? That's why he's worshipping you because of that hedge. Later on, he actually said, just touch. Leave, in other words, leave him, remove the hedge. Hmm? So you can see, the enemy is on the outlook for those without that particular protective. There is a supernatural hedge. If it's not there, the enemy can walk into your life and walk out of it any way he likes he can do that and the challenge is that when he touches you can see that it's all manners of life because he now said you know you have preserved him you have even given this man this you have even you know everything he touches you have blessed the world some of you have businesses you have families and you think that those things are just moving okay just because of chance no you think that that's how it's supposed to be <laughs> that husband of yours who you think is a church boy if the enemy touches him that one and he can turn that man into a different person you will cry i'm telling you you think he's a church boy now he comes home in time you know he doesn't drink he is you know but now, when the enemy unleashes a hand upon that wife or that particular husband and turns him into a ferocious wolf, you can cry. 
So what we are talking about is how do we deal with a satanic harassment as children of God? Because it targets the helpless. And yet you and I know the Bible says that the Lord is my ever present helper in times of trouble. Can you make that declaration? Say the Lord is my ever present helper in times of trouble. Somebody shout hallelujah. And we need to pray that when he comes to your office, when he comes to your home, when he comes to wherever, he sees that hedge. Huh? You think he has not been trying? I told you, some of you, your survival is just because somebody is praying for you. But now you can learn how to pray for yourself. Yeah? If you want to clap, you clap. The Bible says about Goliath that for 40 days he came forward to, to, to take his stand morning and evening. One of the things that satanic harassment does is to constantly come to check whether the door is open for oppression. First Samuel chapter 17, you know the story. The army of Saul was spending time to go to that place to go and listen to Goliath making noise about them. But one day, when David came on the scene, he changed that particular, you know, atmosphere. Because David understood that there is somebody in him that is greater than satanic harassment. There are Goliaths, spirit of Goliath that has to die this afternoon. We're going to spend time, we're going to spend time in prayer. Yeah? We want to spend time in prayer. And so that satanic harassment is real. Because the target is the helpless. That constant and repeated satanic visitation we must deal with in prayer this afternoon. Because there is a powerful hand that can lift you up today. There is a hand that can put an end to every satanic harassment is there the long arm the outstretched arm of the Lord that's the arm of victory that's the arm that puts to an end has harassment that's the arm that conquers that's the arm that lifts up the Bible says that is the lifter of my head somebody shout hallelujah so when we begin to pray here you need to know that that arm is at work and let me say this and then we go into prayer part of the harassment is to make you to lose your ground lose your ground stability is not an issue of being able to physically stand and you are stable because even in your brain there is a part that is responsible for stability if there are doctors here you know it of course, you don't need to be a doctor. There's Uncle Google. You can go there and which part is responsible for me to stand stable. They remove that part. You will not be able to do that. Say, my God is the stability. Is my shock absorber. He stands with me at all times. But part of the harassment the enemy does is to make you to lose your ground. So that you can fall. In the day of trouble, when there are shakings all over the place, when there is fuel, you know, uh, pressure, when there are all kinds of things happening in the world, the aim of the one that wants to harass the children of God is to make them to lose ground. They begin to see that that God you saw in Matthew 9 is not a God of compassion anymore. That's his job. His aim is to show you that that man doesn't care about you anymore. But you will stand. Somebody shout hallelujah. When he harasses, he can even design a timetable for you. Yeah. Acts chapter 12 from verse 1. The Bible says that at that time, put it up. Acts chapter 12 verse 1. The Bible says it was about this time 
that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them. The next verse. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. You see? So James was on the wrist. We, we call it a hit list. You see it there? That's a hit list. The next verse. When he saw, somebody say, when he saw. When he saw that this pleased Jews, he proceeded to do what? That satanic harassment can timetable. This is what I'm going to do in June. There are some of you in your families, every time June has come, every time July has come, every time October has come, that's when those things that you know begin to happen. Yeah. That's the satanic harassment. He can draw a timetable. If you don't stop him, he's going to stop you. Now show where the, what they did. What did they do to stop the harassment? The next verse. One, two, three. Can we read together? After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Are you reading? The next phrase. The next verse. Did you see that? that? That intervention is heavenly intervention that cancels the satanic harassment. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's what you are going to do now. Why don't you stand on your feet? In the next 20 minutes, we are going to bind all the forces that have programmed themselves against your life, against your health, against you as an individual, against your marriage. Rise up on your feet. If you don't know how to pray, don't worry. If you don't, if you have never prayed loudly, it's none of our business. Lift up your voices and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand on the authority of the blood of Jesus. I stand on the authority of the precious blood that flowed for me on Calvary. I stand on the authority of the precious blood that came forth for me that flowed for my Lord to deal with every satanic harassment that has been at play over my life, over my destiny, over my business. Pray, 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 pray. Over my life, over my church. In the name of Jesus, pray, pray, pray. Every level of satanic harassment assigned against me as a family man, assigned against me as a husband, Every level of satanic harassment assigned against me as a marriage, assigned against me as a church, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. Go ahead, pray, 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 pray. I cast you out. I cast you out. Every timetable, every timetable, programming systems of the devil, program systems of powers of darkness, programming systems of wickedness. Hear the word of the Lord. Lose your power over me. Over me. Over me. Lose your power. Lose your power. Lose your power. Lose your, if you don't believe that's your business. Lose your power. But things are happening now. Lose your power. Lose your power. Lose your power over that man. Lose your power. Some of you, your husbands, are full of sexual immorality. But you have never asked yourself, why is it that it's only him? Lift up your voices and begin to deal with that power, my friend. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every satanic harassment assigned against my marriage. Assigned against my children. Some of you, your children are on drugs. That is part of the harassment. A season has come to put to an end every attempt the enemy has unleashed against me, against my family, against my children. Let it lose his hold. 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 Let it lose hold. In the name of Jesus, every level of unproductivity, every level of unproductivity, tonight, tonight, in the name of Jesus, I come out. The Lord is my strength. In the name of Jesus. 
lift up your voices and say father every tree of an achievement against my family i terminate you now in the name of jesus lift up your voice and pray that prayer my friend tree of an achievement tree of an achievement Rika, Seya, Diba, Zikapo, Zile, Bolo, Zima, Rekete, Zemo, Krodishi. Every tree of non-achievement be uprooted, 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 be uprooted. In the name of Jesus, satanic harassment that targets the helpless, satanic harassment that targets teenagers, some of you have teenagers, that's why they are into drugs. It doesn't just happen. There is a power behind those children. In the name of Jesus, I suck you now by fire. In the name of Jesus, every level of satanic harassment assigned against my life, assigned against my children. My children shall not be candidates of drugs. If you are a parent, pray, pray, pray. My children shall never be candidates of drugs. Drug addiction. Leave my home. Leave my home. Sexual immorality. Leave my home. In the name of Jesus, I stand on the authority of the blood. The blood, the blood is the foundation upon which I have the authority. The blood of Jesus. The blood that cleanses. The blood that washes away in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus satanic harassment lift up your voices and say father every ancestral power that is after my life hear the word of the lord i command you to die in the name of jesus lift up your voices and pray that prayer every ancestral power Powers of sexual immorality, powers of alcohol, powers of witchcraft, powers of wizardry, powers, forces of darkness that have been unleashed upon my destiny. I command all of them to die in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Reke maze krete shiabo, lomoso kapaye debeze, reke deze makroda silabos. I stand on the authority confronting every family problem, every family issue, every issue of inheritance of sicknesses. Some of you have been told that you see your father had BP, your, 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 your uncle had the same, you too you should have. Some of you have been told your so and so died at 40, you too expect. Lift up your voice and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every harassment targeting my life i command it to turn back 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 harassment of untimely death you shall not locate me you shall not locate no 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 you shall not locate me in the name of jesus harassment of untimely death in the name of jesus pray 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 this is the hour you have the opportunity now and it's gonna happen I command them to turn back in the name of Jesus. 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 Lift up your voices again and say, Father, every ancestral power hanging at the door of my breakthrough, let it be destroyed by fire. Let it be destroyed by fire. Go ahead, go ahead. Let it be destroyed by fire. Let it be destroyed by fire. Let it be destroyed by fire. Every ancestral power assigned and hanging at the door of my breakthrough. Let it be destroyed by fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost is coming upon it. Fire of the Holy Ghost is coming upon it. Fire of the Holy Ghost is happening now. It's happening. It doesn't matter where it is. Let it be destroyed by fire. Let it be destroyed by fire. Let fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost, locate every confusion, every confusion in my family line. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rikata, maze krebo shiamba, masokobo. 
You see, Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 11. I want to give you that verse. Then we pray the last prayer. Remain standing. Jeremiah 20 verse 11. The Bible says, but the Lord is with me. Say, the Lord is with me. Or oh, you can even put it up if you are there. Say, but the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly. Somebody say thoroughly. This grace, their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lift up your voice and say, Father, this is your word. Let it perform the purpose for which you are sending it now. In the name of Jesus, every level of persecution that is unjust, let the Lord, my warrior, let the Lord, my comforter, my fighter, let him defeat it by fire. Go ahead, pray, pray, pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord is my warrior. The Lord is my warrior. They will not overcome because those that overcome the world, indeed those are the children of God. Father, we honor you. The last prayer I'm going to pray. If you are here and you are sick, if you are here and you are sick, this is the time now. Touch that part where it's painful. If you are here, you have a report of the doctor. There's a report of the Lord. Touch that part. As I pray now, if you're going to feel vibration, that's the power of God coming upon you. Father, I thank you on the cross. You put to an end all forms of sicknesses. By your stripes, we are healed. And so, in the name of Jesus Christ, every sickness, every infirmity, every foul spirit, every demonically inspired sickness that has not found any medication at the hospital, that any one of these are happy. I rebuke it now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that pain I rebuke that force of sickness I rebuke that infirmity and I command it never to come back in that place uh-huh 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 wait on wait on continue continue the power of God the power of God the power of God the power of God the power of the Holy Spirit the angels are here now the angelic forces that you know minister healing in the name of Jesus Christ wherever wherever father let them see that it's only you that can approach and some of them are going to having testimonies some of them are going to have testimonies of the highest time anything that is oppressing anyone here harassing them i rebuke you in the name of jesus evil spirits i rebuke you in the name of jesus every spirit contrary to the voice of the Lord in the name of Jesus I command you to turn back and leave you have no power to oppress the children of God and now I declare healing upon those ones I declare healing upon that one in the name of Jesus and let your presence begin to locate every power that has enslaved these your children now and begin to bring them out of bondage begin to bring them out of satanic prisons the bible says that indeed he shall deliver us from the prison the prison doors including sickness father establish it upon their lives let that peace from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet let that peace break any infirmity and establish order in the name of Jesus father we thank you because you are doing it and you've done it and that in your presence my God and my King you are lifted you reign you are victorious just begin to thank him begin to thank him for healing you are victorious you are worthy 
you reign my God my King you reign my Jesus mighty God ha. walked about the sea and praised the day you can bring your offering now as we sing
for the time of prayer that has prevailed in this place and we thank you because you are a god that answers by fire every one of these your children that are going to walk out of this place father i ask that mighty acts acts of glory shall begin to happen upon their lives change their seasons delete the report of the devil delete the harassment of the enemy and rewrite a different story altogether and father that only you will be glorified even those that are walking in for the next service father i proclaim peace be still upon their lives that the powers of darkness never take advantage upon the situation in the name of jesus and so father we yield our hearts to you let your glory fill this place let your glory overshadow every circumstance let there be a major turn around for every other thing that the enemy had proclaimed let your mighty hand deprogram everything that the enemy had put in place so lord we worship you and now may the lord bless you and keep you even those online may the lord answer you in the day of trouble may he scatter the darkness from before your path may the lord arise for you for your light has come may the lord remove all the satanic harassment over your life and may the lord establish you in his ways he shall be well with you he shall be well with your business he shall be well with your family he shall be well with your marriage in the name of jesus and may the blessing of god almighty god the father god the son and god the holy spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever and everybody say amen, amen. hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord.
still there What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh
welcome each one of us as we gather together this afternoon with hearts broken and yet reminded that Christ is with us. So let us all stand and we'll begin the service by singing that hymn on page three, led by the choir. God, we say thank you to you. Your word reminds us to be thankful to you at all times and in all circumstances. Even at such a moment as this, God, we stand to say thank you. We thank you for the life of your servant, Lord, whom you have given time to live on this earth. And Lord, that you have chosen to take him back home. We are thankful for who he was. Lord, we know that he has touched many lives, and we celebrate your greatness, O God, this afternoon. We surrender ourselves to you, God. We pray that you consume our hearts, consume our lives, consume everything about us, O God, because you are consuming fire. Lord, we pray that you give us the grace to go through this ceremony, Lord, to go through this service, Lord. Give us the grace to hear your voice. Give us the grace to be touched by you. Lord, give us peace. Not as the world gives, but the peace just that comes from your heart. That is what we desire to have this afternoon. We give you praise, our God and our Father. For this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Once again, we welcome each one of us at this uh, service where we celebrate the life of our dear brother and we want to pray that the Lord will encourage each one of us in a special way 
and give us the grace as we continue to grieve together, but also to celebrate together. Let me invite my brother Michael to take us through the first part of the service. Thank you. Let's be seated. Beloved, we do thank the Lord for this most important resource he has given us, the word of God. I'm sure if Yese was here with us and it had happened to anybody else, the first place to go to would be the word. When Yese gave his life to the Lord, he loved God with a passion, but also had a yearning for the word. And listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ says when he comes at Lazarus' family. He said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand up at the last upon the earth. Whom shall I see for myself? And mine eyes shall behold and not another. Apostle Paul writing to Timothy in chapter 6, he also reminds us that we brought nothing into the world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The last one will come from Apostle Paul who writes to the Romans in chapter 8 in verse 38 and he reminds us, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beloved, this is a great encouragement. We know that even in death, we are not separated from our Father as long as we leave this world knowing who the Lord is in our lives. I'm going to ask that we stand and uh, read Psalm 23. Again, as an affirmation that yes, the Lord is aware of the pain that we are carrying in our hearts. If you have mastered it by heart, you'll go with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We shall kneel or sit as we continue in prayer. As our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. O Heavenly Father, who in your Son, Jesus Christ, has given us a true faith and a sure hope. Help us, we pray, to live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting, and strengthen this faith and hope in us all the days of our life, through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior.
Thank you so much, Canon Michael. I'm now going to ask my brother Meshach to come and uh, guide us through the laying of the wreaths. Thank you very much, uh, Provost. The leadership of uh, All Saints Cathedral and the assisting clergy, the family of uh, the Kamanyiri family and uh, the Mubanjusi family, relatives, and all of your friends. We want to take the pleasure and honor to welcome all of you here, and we thank you for graciously accepting to be part of this service. We remain grateful to God for the life of Yese and for the friendship that we've witnessed along the years that he has lived. Uh, we are going to go through the ceremony of laying rates on um, the casket bearing the remains of our brother, father, and friend. And as we start this off, and in the true spirit of one of the organizations that yesterday wholly believed in and participated in, the Lions Club, I will ask the Lions Club of Kampala Central, where yesterday was a member, to quicken your steps up here and um, drop the casket carrying the remains of Yese into the land colors and then we'll be able to lay the wreaths. ask um, my brother Katobe to come up with that list of rates and lead us through this part quickly. Um, we have agreed with the church that will give this service within the stipulated two hours and want to do exactly that. So at some point, don't uh, be surprised if you see us cut off some of the processes, we'll be trying to manage time. So Wilfred. Praise the Lord Church. Wilfred Skatove is my name. And I'm going to perform this task of inviting these ones that I will invite to lay wreath on the casket of Yesi Mwanjizi, our friend. We shall start with the wreath of the widow of Yesi wife of Yese, Emerda Tonjir Wembanjese. Yes. 
say. As they say, by clear that. says that was a even when your dad has passed on uh, we shall have uh, the one of siblings yes is siblings Jordan the Grand Jordan yeah. he had gotten the gift of the Grand Jordan there they are we have a maternal uncle in Arami. These are the roots, they are the first cousins of Yese. Here they are saying bye to their own. Uh, thank you so much, the roots. May I now invite the Lion's Club, Kampara Central. Yese was a lion. Lions Club of Kampara Central, the club where he belonged and which he served diligently. So here are the lions. More lions are coming. Let's quicken our steps. Yes. Great. All right. Lion yes, fare thee well. I now invite again the Lion's Club Mukono host. Lion's Club Mukono host. around any other lions from all over the world you come and uh, bid farewell to a fellow lion so much. Can we have now the board of directors in our high school? 
Board of Directors at Nayor High School. The school that Yesse founded. Board of Directors and Iowa High School. Then I will also request the management and board and staff of Nairo High School. The board, they are not yet here. All right. Management and staff, Nairo High School. If you are not yet here, are you here? All right. Good representation. Can we have the students' community of Nair High School? Uh huh. Mukono is still not near. And you know the city here. Students? All right. This will be followed by Western Kore, Kampara chapter. Western Korea Diocese, Kampara chapter. Where Yesi has been a prominent member. West Ankore Diocese, Kampara chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, headed by the head of Leite, West Ankore Diocese, Awashasha, Weres headed by the coordinators. Ah, all of them are here. Now, as Western Korea Diocese, certainly we have lost our dear one. This one will be followed by Stan Big Bank. And then Pepsi family be getting ready. Stan Big Bank, then Pepsi family. That is Stanvik. All right, Stanvik Bank is saying rest in peace has been our customer. Pips family. Followed by Mr. Pade Mulamira and family. Pepsi. Okay. Then Mr. Pade Mulamira and family be getting ready. Tapade Muramira Okay Mr. Tumsime William Mr. Tumsime William will be followed by Mulagozon A risk from Mulagozon Tumsime William Quickly Okay Followed by Mulago Zone. This one will be followed by St. John's Church, Kamocha. This was a Yes's Church. St. John's Church, Kamocha. St. John's Church has lost a strong member of their church. St. John's Sako. St. John's Sako. This 
one will be followed by the Banova family. The Banova family. Banova family as they come. Uh, Ampara Victoria Lions Club will also be requested to come. This is Banova family, then Kampara Victoria Lions Club. This one will be followed by the Karamiri Colin family. Father's Union, St. John's, Kamocha. This is Father's Union, Kamocha, headed by the chairman, who is the Diocesan Chairman, uh, Diocesan President, Father's Union, but also the Provincial President, Father's Union. York Beverages, York Beverages will be followed by uh, Turiahabwe family. York Beverages followed by Turiahawe family. Turiahawe family is here followed by Eclipse. Eclipse family. Family will be followed by uh, OBs and OGs Nile High School. All the students of Nile High School. ones will be followed by Mr. Makaru family. family saying bye to Yesse. These ones will be followed by Honorable uh, Veraro's family. Honorable Veraro. There he is, will be followed by Honorable Muyanja uh, Senyonga. Then John Bosco and Masenta Angari.
we shall have uh, Honorable Sir Richard Kijuka. Then we shall have a wreath from Mita Concert Limited. Mita Concert Limited will be followed by a wreath by the proposed Central Ankole Diocese, where Yese was the treasurer. Central Ankole Diocese will be followed by Lions Club of Entebbe. These are the members of the proposed Central Ankole Diocese. They, they, they are they are building a new diocese, the Diocese of Central Ankore. Then, Lion's Club of Ventebe. will be followed by OB's St. Kabwa High School, where Yese started from. Hobbies of St. Kabwa High School will be followed by Chapa Investment Limited. St. Kabwa Hobbies. You also went to St. Kabwa? Oh. All right. investment will be followed by the old students of Nganwa High School. Nganwa High School old students this is one other school where yes went These ones are now followed by Governor Lions Uganda, District 411B. Governor, District Governor Lions Uganda, District 411B. There she is. Uh, then the science class 2015 these ones will be followed by joint medical stores science class 2015 then uh, joint medical stores joint medical stores will be followed by Mary Karoro Okrot. And with her. And with the Honorable Mary. Okrot. I'm also told Honorable Jacqueline Atwede has a wreath. 
jacket at Wayde. Did I see her round? All right. That comes now to the end of the name of the wreath. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll now return the microphone to the provost to lead us on the next part of the service. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, let me take this opportunity to welcome and introduce the ministers here present. We welcome each one of you who is here in your respective capacities. But I'm going to take this moment to welcome the Archbishop of the Province of the Church of Uganda, the Most uh, Reverend Samuel uh, Stephen Kazimba, who has joined us. Welcome, Your Grace, uh, to be with us at this service. And he has come with his chaplain, the Reverend Johnson Kansime. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We've also been joined by um, the Right Reverend Elphaz Mari. Uh, he's here with us, Bishop. Thank you uh, for coming. We have our retired Assistant Secretary, Reverend Fred, uh, Canon Fred Komunda. Thank you. Uh, we have Reverend Canon Michael Mukwana. He's here with us. Uh, um, we have Reverend Canon uh, Justice Miwanda. He's here with us. We have Reverend Anthony Kamkama. Uh, we have Reverend Dr. Duncan Smugumia. He's here with us. We have Reverend uh, Dennis. He's here with us. Uh, we have Reverend David Serwada. He's also here with us. Thank you so much. And all the clergy that are there in the congregation, we welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm Reverend Colonel Dr. Rebecca Nyegenye. We bring our condolences to the family and we pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen and encourage you during this trying time. We are now going to sing a hymn and after that we'll be having the reading of the word. Let us stand and we'll sing that hymn on page four. Yeah, yeah. 
let us take our seats. I invite those who are taking the readings, let them come together. We'll start with the Isaiah reading, the reading from Isaiah. Uh, those taking the readings, please come. We'll begin with the reading from Isaiah chapter 57. Good afternoon. Our first reading is from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, from verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 51, from verse 1 to 2. Good afternoon to you all. Our second reading is from Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven to eight. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of the righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. That's the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. We will stand and sing a hymn on page four as we welcome His grace. Uh, page five, hymn on page five, as we welcome His grace to come and minister to us. Oh, 
The words of one author, he writes about wounded healers, and he says, we are all wounded, and yet God calls us to be healers of others. You and I are wounded and hurt by the death of our friend, yes, Wangizi. I'm sure the clergy here are wounded. The parish priest of Kamwacha. All the brothers and here present. With me inclusive. We are wounded when we heard the, the news. I said, really? Maybe somebody else. But when I saw the picture, I said, this is unbelievable. I can't believe it. I first met the late in Mukono when I was a, a provost of Mukono and he was really working with us and supporting us when he was still connected with the Umeme and uh, we did a lot together and he helped us as a church in that area. It's uh, around that time we started a school in Mukono, Nile, and uh, we went there because that was my area. Always wonderful hospitality. He's the man I know who loved God. And he loved God's ministers. This was a uh, a private school but it was as if it is a church founded classes would be stopped so that a minister comes and read prayers in this school so when I was still a provost in Mukono I had met this school one of my church founded schools in quotes but it never stopped at me I think you have already seen uh, a, a, a photo there when he was with Bishop James Seba Mukono. So this school has been our school. And let, let me believe it will still be our school even when he's not there because the staff is a good staff. These are some of the schools we have been going and ministering including St. John's, the one founded by Honorable Mayanja. These are our schools. And I want to call upon you, proprietors of schools, allow the church to minister in your schools. Because they are God's people. And uh, the church has the ability to control the strikes of students. But also of teachers, whether they are fighting arts, sciences, for us we just come as neutral and bring the message of peace. And Honorable here knows the, the work we've been doing together. Thank you very much. This man has loved the church. But I have known him as a very generous man very generous. I know a number of projects, a number of projects, especially in Mukono, which we are left unfinished. Just because he was a wise man, he could come and say, you are beginning this house, I will give you iron seats. Then you have to work hard. I know those projects, including the project at uh, Nsube and uh, all those areas, because all that was my area. Nsube, uh, one Tony. Oh, he has been giving and giving a, a lot of support the, to the church, and uh, I know that very well. I will not talk. Uh, I think uh, the Bishop of uh, uh, West Ham Corey will be talking about that part because I know a lot from Kono when I was with him. Very kind man, very developmental, and loved people. A rich man 
but also rich in heart. Because there are so many people who are rich with resources, but they are poor inside. This man has been both. So we are going to lose him. And so today we have been celebrating. It is a one year ever since we started online church of Uganda. So I was the preacher. But I said uh, you, you have to I have to excuse myself to go and be present as we bid farewell to our friend. So I want to comfort the families and all of you. I want to comfort the diocese of uh, of West um, Kole. Uh, I have heard the there's a dance they mentioned. It's not among the 37 dances I have. <laughs> I am hearing it the first time. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> I said, no. I am the Archbishop. I'm here. Central Uncle. I don't know that one. <laughs> Maybe in the future, world, but not now. Uh, uh, because, let me share this, it was passed by the Provincial Assembly and creating a new diocese was put at hold until further notice. It's only, only two dioceses that were allowed. The diocese of Bundibujo, that is, will it be Luenzori East? I think Luenzori East, and also Bujiri, which will be Busoga East. Those are the ones which were allowed. But uh, because of COVID, they have not been able to work so hard. Except now, uh, this diocese of uh, South, uh, Luenzori East, or Luenzori South, by that one because I was the one visiting to, 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 to check. For them, they were really ahead of Bujiri. They were far. I'm sure those ones, unless otherwise, they will get a diocese. But uh, Central Uncle, uh -huh. don't create a problem in my province when I'm the Archbishop. But all the same, I want to appreciate that he has been a treasurer for that. So uh, we need to, I need to come and inquire so that we would get that money. It comes to a province for some other duties. <laughs> Since I'm paying the church house, you know you have contributed a lot. We had a debt of almost 60 billion, but now it has gone down to 16 billion. So I will need that. So, I will need that money which was a treasurer and it, it covers some of my debts. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Having said that, I want you to know we are equally hard. But we stand with you. We stand with you. As the psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where will my help come from? Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. This is Psalms 121. The psalmist was wondering where his help will come from because he was troubled. He thought that his help will come from the mountains. Not really. Only from God. Family members and all of us our help comes from the Lord. Not anywhere, not anywhere. But I've been reminded by, you know, I've been wondering when I heard about the death of our, our brother, Yese, the man who has been hard working, the man who had a lot of plans for his schools, appropriate of schools, a very generous man kind man. And I wondered, really, God, did you, is this your own making? Really? But uh, let me, I, uh, so I was just wondering, like you might be wondering about that. But it has happened. And uh, I'm reminded of the words of, 
from Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, which said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. He was calling the Israelites to turn back to him. Seek me as I'm still nearer and you can find me. Look for me. He was calling them, please come, come, come back to me. The invitation of coming. And he said, because these Israelites who had many plans and other things, and he said, wait a minute. Your plans should be aligned with my plans. Because you don't know them. And uh, the people of Israel were already thinking and planning in the area of knowledge, wisdom, and they had greater things as human beings, like all of us. But here he says, your thoughts. In other words, he says, your plans are not, your ways are not, really. I would have loved this man to live up to 90 years. Because he had great plans. And good plans for, you, for humanity. Good plans for people. Good plans for the orphans. He has been giving bursaries. Good plans. And God said, wait a minute. Ah, no, no. He will stop here. For which reasons? Reasons are not known to us. Only God. The creator of heaven and the earth is the one who created the earth. I like the words of Wayne Gwidem and I quote them a lot. He said, God is the cause of his own existence. And because he's the cause of his own existence, therefore he has authority over he caused it to exist. These are from a book of theology called Systematic Theology. He wrote those. And each time I first challenged, like, I remember his words, God is the cause of his own existence. Nobody created God. He's the one who caused his own existence and all the things. And therefore, he has authority over what he caused to exist. He has authority to say, you stop here, you continue. Recently, I looked at my father. My father is in the uh, 90s, and he got dementia. He doesn't remember me. I had to bring him to my home in Mokono, Nakawago, to take care of him. But uh, just recently, we lost some family members who were young, and I said, now, I can't understand God, really. <laughs> my father can't remember anything, but God is still keeping him. For the reasons I can't understand. But I am happy each time I go, I find him. And I ask uh, the nurse, is a permanent one, how is he doing? And recently he told me, he's in his own world. <laughs> Nobody will understand God. God's watch is different from our watches. The way he counts his time is totally different. When you count, this one should live, and he says, no. His watch is different from our watches. And what does it mean? It says he is the God of all gods. He is the king of all kings. He is the master of all masters. He has authority over us. That's why I pity people who has made a strategic plan of killing others. Now, when you do that, what happens? 
when, when you are also cold and you die. I just have an imagination. This one who killed someone and also died. Just an imagination. And they meet. Just an imagination. Don't go far. <laughs> Won't this one to ask, uh-huh, you have also come here like, like us. May we look forth to spare life instead of destroying life. Let us get the welfare from hard working instead of steering like this man has been working. Because when you steal, you leave everything behind. Look at the space it's going to take. It's not many people like us. I am one of the few who are blessed that I have extra height, six by two. So when I die, I will take a, a little bit of <laughs> extra food. But look at your neighbor who is shorter than me. <laughs> Running after land. And stealing. These days, stealing land is becoming a normal thing. But really, really, why do you do that? And tomorrow you will live here things. Why don't you... God is not against people becoming rich. He is against becoming rich with what? Thieves, stealing. You don't know my plan, says the Lord. Let us align ourselves in God's plan by fearing him by accepting Jesus as our personal Savior and the Lord so that when we pass from this world the message will be Jesus the way, the truth and the life and we see him listen to this word from James chapter 4 verse 13 he said now listen you will say Today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, call on business and make money. Why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears a little while and then vanishes. Life is like a mist. It happens so quickly and vanishes. Here, James says, instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Always, God's will, I will be able to do this and this. We should plan, but we should put our plans in the Lord. Because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Instead, when we put our plans in God, this is what he will do. He will take care of them and us. And when he calls us, plans will continue. Plans will continue. Let me suggest this also. As we plan, let us plan and work hard. God is not in He says, poor teachers, he who doesn't work shouldn't eat either. God is not interested in lazy people. And that's why even when he calls people to serve him, you who are here, this is actually chance of uh, Western Korea. Stand up. Stand. That man is very busy. Very busy. But God called him to be the chancellor. God will never call redundant people. He calls hard-working people. You may see. God never called redundant people. Less the ones. He called Peter a fisherman. Fishing was not a simple job. Paul was a philosopher. Paul and a teacher. I don't know. Was he subject of art or science? 
I don't know that. <laughs> I need to make a research. <laughs> This is this, this one a theologian, this one my provost. She's a, a doctor. <laughs> you should give me an answer soon. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, look at this. Luke, Luke was a doctor, a physician, and a surgeon. Doctor Luke, the, the writer of the gospel according to Luke and also Acts. Hard working, you know. Uh, Matthew and Zacchaeus were tax collectors. They were working for Uganda Revenue Authority of Israel, <laughs> of the Roman Empire, <laughs> to put it in that context. Revenue. Hard working people. A lot of work. That's why I put the Uganda Revenue Authority, because people working revenue, they are hard working people. They will always find something to do and to get the money to support us. <laughs> Zacchaeus was a member. <laughs> Listen to this. All these people. So he called hardworking people. But he wants us to plan with him. Let us do the right thing and earn it rightly so that you don't build a house with stolen money. And you sleep in a house when the iron sheets are complaining. Actually, you stole us. You stole us. Better have a small house where you got money in the right ways. Because tomorrow you will leave that house. May God help us. I suggest let us be faithful. Plan for our spiritual lives by inviting Jesus Christ to save you so that when you die, you know where you are going. I've been asking some people, uh, if the Lord, suppose the Lord calls you now, do you know where you are going? And these are members of my church, ha, Archbishop. It is the Lord who knows actually. <laughs> for me, I'm a good person in the church. I give offer to his, it's him. You should know by accepting Jesus Christ. Because it says, he who has the Son has life. He who doesn't have the Son of God has no life. Let me also, before you conclude, suggest this. As we prepare our souls, please ensure you, you write a will, a dummy, a will. The clergy who wedded us with the, my wife Margaret 38 years ago, my friend, the father, his wife died the other Tuesday and we buried her on Friday. Then this last Tuesday also, my pastor, my clergy also died and we buried him on Friday. So you never know. It's good to write a will. Planning means you plan how to get income. You should also plan how to go in heaven by accepting Jesus Christ. But you should also plan how to leave your property behind when you go in heaven. So that the people you leave behind do not suffer because you didn't write a will. Would you please ask your neighbor such a hard question? That, did you, have you finished writing your will? <laughs> May the Lord be with you. <laughs> Let's just put our hearts together as we give thanks to the Lord for those words. And the question still remains before us. Have you prepared to go to heaven? Do you know Jesus Christ personally as Lord and Savior? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Just take a minute to think about your relationship with Jesus. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son 
does not have life. The question is, do you have life? If your time arrived now, do you have life? Life is what we get beyond the grave. The life you have here is temporary. The life you have here is short. But the true life is in Christ Jesus. The life which is eternal. And I pray that you will find space in your heart. If you are not certain. If you are not sure of the direction you are going. That you give your life to Jesus today. And Jesus will reign in your life forever. And you'll never regret the decision that you have made. Our God and our Father, we are here to say thank you for the gift of your word. We are here to testify that you are our God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word that you have brought unto us through your servant. How I pray that this word will remain in our hearts even as we go through this hard, hard time. I pray that you'll encourage us and strengthen us to be in your presence. I pray, Lord Jesus, for that particular individual who has chosen to know you personally as Lord and Savior, that they will stand and bear witness and testify that we gave our lives to Jesus in the cathedral during the funeral service. Lord, we thank you because you hear us. We give you praise, glory, and honor for this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall we stand and affirm our faith with the words of Apostles' Creed? It is on page 6. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats. We are going to give our offering to the Lord. And I want to encourage each one of us to give from the bottom of your heart. You're giving, you're supporting the family, and you're giving is saying we stand with the family at this time of loss. The baskets are going to be placed in different places. Use the basket which is nearest to you as you give back to the Lord and the choir will be ministering. We thank you so much, your grace, for the message that has come to us and we know that you will be encouraged. The choir as we give back to the Lord.
continue in prayer. I have a Father, Jehovah Elohim. Blessed be your name. When to come to you, Father, in this evening different families and a church in general and a country to bless you Lord for the life that you have accorded your servant and now we thank you that Lord you granted him an opportunity to come and experience life and do your work and at the right time Lord you have picked him and taken him home Therefore, as a church, Lord, we want to commit the family of the late Yes, that you comfort them, Lord, the widow, the children, and all the family members and the friends and the colleagues. We beseech thee, Abba Father, you who is the source of all comfort that you comfort them with the perfect comfort that proceeds from your throne. We want to uplift them to you, Lord, that you will indeed fill those gaps within them. Because in your word, you tell us, you are the father of the fatherless, the husband of the widows, and the Lord of the forsaken. And again, Jesus, look, you said it in the gospel, Matthew 28 verse 20 you comforted the apostles knowing that they would be bereaved knowing that you would leave them and so you said behold I'll be with you until the end and so as a church and the colleagues of the foreign hero each one of us like his grace has stated that we have really been hurt and hit hard and so you will comfort us comfort this family provide for them we pray that the lord will bless his businesses and all that he has accomplished in his life we pray lord that you forgive him where he has failed as a human being and we continue to pray that you accord his soul rest we pray for the preparations of traveling to Bushenyi that lord you will indeed take a lead family na team yito ya kampala chapter western korea diocese to abantu siteka teka ukwebembera mukama no kuteka teke byo kushendekereza umubiri kade ebyasigarara byo wishemwe nisha bangu enteka teka zono stage cheji otegure mhanda ne twamba mano gona ga kwenda kureta confusion no muhanda abarindu batambura umuri yekekiro na nyenca kare na bwataho ruhango murunji ikirize nteka tekezo zona oze shoronzi yeje abwimbabazawe kandi mukama umukoro gukwa hamuhero ugorwa kana 
omoroshozi twabantu tumusibora cyumwe mbaga ye ya mweru ayesu ni tshaba ngwe jo mbaga tebekanseje nabantu abaturindira mu cyaro mukama ubahumurize kandi umukorogo wishemwe ogwa muheru nabwo guheke kandi tongere kwibisa umwizine ryaranga tatitwe rango mwana rango muheru kwera amen In the same spirit, we continue to pray for our friend Emerita. We pray for the children, all of Natukunda. We pray for Philemon Mugabe, Ingrid Musheva, Amba Semire, and we pray for all the relatives. Comfort them. Let me invite you all to observe a moment of silence as we also pray for all the businesses and the work he has left behind so that nothing will stop. request you to stand up for benediction. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts and our ways. Our plans are not God's plans. Let us plan with him by inviting him to take over everything. Let us heart and let us be faithful. Let us write our wills so that we plan for the wealth we leave behind. And some people fear when you write a will you are going to die. I wrote mine over 20 years ago when I was a reverend and now I'm a bishop. It's God who keeps us. May God take care of us. And the peace of God which transcends human understanding keep you all in the knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessings without sorrow. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon family members, rest upon all of you, rest upon all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Because he lives, I confess. so much your grace we can take our seats and now i want to invite uh, the mc to take us through the eulogies thank you very much provost the archbishop and the church leadership I want to thank you very much for leading us through this uh, service and we've been uh, strengthened and rejuvenated and our hope in the Lord is being renewed afresh. We are going to have a few speeches. We don't have much time with us. I want to seek the indulgence of the church that as we begin this, before we begin the speeches, you allow us to request His Grace, the Archbishop, on behalf of the church, to lay a wreath on the casket of uh, his friend our friend and one Christian that would love too in that capacity. Your grace may it please you and lay wreath on behalf of the church. Thank you. Your grace.
now have uh, speeches or call them music. and our plea is that we will keep them as abridged as we probably can because time is not our best ally and we know people want to get back to complete the afternoons in office and as such we'll be calling the family speeches to come first but as uh, a nice breaker we've agreed that we'll ask one of the friends to Yese Ndugu uh, Asan Kasinje to come and give us the opening speech after which the children should be getting ready to speak to us together with uh, the mom of Asan Kasinje. Praise the Lord, brethren, your grace and the clergy, the family, relatives and friends. It's not a good day to speak, but I will speak on behalf of his friends. As you can imagine, yes, I had many friends from the education sector, from government, politics, business, and many others, and us who are, in secure, who are in security. I don't know whether I will represent all of you, but people who are invited to speak on behalf of friends normally speak on their own behalf. You will excuse me, because I don't know how you related with you. It's an honor to be chosen to speak on this foreign hero. I knew Yese in 1985 when he joined St. Kagwa High School, Shelly. It was in my last year and it was beginning first, I mean senior five. I went to Makerere and left him behind. He wrote somewhere in the old Scopa, St. Kagwa Old Boys Association. And he said one of the people that inspired him to work hard and go was me. I kept on paying attention to, the, to those who were behind us. I was second pioneer the pioneers are people like the CDF, Afande Mbadi, who shared the decker with me. And his year 24 went to Makere University. Indeed, yes, found me at Makere University. I was in second year. He was part of those Shema students, formed what we call Shema University Students Association, SUSA. He was with us was Dr. Rioda, Red Bernard, and many others. I started realizing his incredible mobilization skills. Yes, he can mobilize. He can even mobilize animals, I think. Echikurema yese, numbasobu tachabasa. And we organized ourselves into a formidable force that went back to Shema and taught other students who were in HSC. I used to do economics at Makere University and of course political science. And we would go and teach. And very many came and found us at Makere. Yese mobilized that. We even planted trees. I saw in Yese a very, very focused man. Yes, got married to Imerda. When I was teaching at Otsubo Secondary School, Imerda, you were teaching at the primary section. How happy I was that the two of you came together. I know he started businesses, many things that he did. 
And I remember Imelda you were at my office. I was chief political commissar for the first time. I was chief political commissar of police twice. In between, I went to be the director of Interpol. And she came to me and said, yes, he's about to be conned. And we called yes. And I think it was between Zana and the, the next town, is it Kaboa or Ruboa? And it was about to be conned, even in millions, about 100 millions. And I called yes. I think Demofere was never happy with me. Yes, I was a friend, my grace to my own brother Herbert, who is not here, but he will be with us tomorrow. And it made me like yes more, because these were two, 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 two good friends. I used to see Herbert mobilize university students in my own home at Chiringo Hill. Yes, I would come and talk to young people. Yes, he is a mentor. He inspires people. He talks as if he's even their age. I saw myself, yes, talking to young people. Now, when it came to the choice of taking some of my young, my young siblings, Nairo High was the, was the choice. I took there my sister, Peace. I don't know whether she's here. And I also took there my sister-in-law, Angela. And yes, always gave me a brief about how they were working. You know, in Uganda, we don't have people who take responsibility to even tell other people about your own family and how it is doing. But you will tell others. But yes, I would call you. And he would brief me. His incredible energy in being the uh, your grace. I've heard what you said about Central Ankara Diocese. I don't want to make you a day. Uh, you know, my, his grace is my friend. <laughs> we come very far. You gave me a task of bringing 50 million from police. I will bring it even if I'm not in police anymore. <laughs> and he kept our money faithfully. Faithful people. And yes, it was an embodiment of people who are faithful. Yes, and I shared the birthday. 23rd of March. And whenever I would be in the euphoria of celebrating a birthday, you know when we were young, we never celebrated birthdays. We pretend our children think we used to celebrate them. We didn't. And the three of us shared the birthday. Yes, right honor of speak of Parliament, Jirba Toranya, and myself, and we used to send messages. 23rd March. He was a clean political, I don't know, somebody who is a dubist. I don't know the English word. I did literature, but that has gone from my mind. And there are many who testify that he joined politics in Shema, Shema municipality. And he was a clean politician. There's nobody who can tell you that yes, he came and stood and he created visions and that kind of thing. He never. I think he left us with. I was amazed. There's a picture I have put on, on, on Twitter. The, the young people call it Twitter. For us, we still call it Twitter. So I put it there. That picture we took it we took we took it that day when they went to register. At the NRM, at the NRM. He went in the car, in the same car with Kahara. To register. Both of them were protagonists, but they went together in the same car. Where do you get a person like that? We work together finally because I know you don't have time, on the Matters Project of Greater Ankore. Message, you were with us. You were with him on the protocol committee. I was the chairman of the venue committee. I don't remember any meeting. Yes, he did not attend. He attended every single meeting.
That is yes. He loved God. He loved serving, as he said, the servants. I saw yes in everything. He would even call and say, by the way, you are venue, something you better come tomorrow. I've never heard from friends and acquaintances that Yese was bad. I've never heard anybody say anything against Yese. And you can imagine where he was sitting. I would hear a lot of things. But I never heard anything about Yese. He always wore a smile. If you found Yese angry and he doesn't want to talk, maybe somewhere else, but anybody who meets Yese you will be able to see his teeth. Tukiyombien se jintu angana tunena mino yese akaba shemerirwe. Shemererwa abanyana ba yese. Let's be happy as he was happy. He was on a mission to lure me into lions. He had not succeeded. I hope Commissioner Monanura will is it yes is the director now. He took my brother to Rota, from Rotary to Lions. <laughs> Robert, you need to handle me well so that I can join in my retirement lion and I serve. I continue to serve. I thank you all of you. Those who have assisted in any way of our friend Yese, when they told me, I kept on, he sent a message and then uh, you remember what I said? No, don't say things which are not true. Say things which are true. Yes, he's alive. Tell me he's not dead. This is what I wrote to you. Tell me he's not dead. He said, unfortunately, Yese has gone. May his rest in eternal peace. Thank you for those wonderful words and uh, yes, probably one other attribute we would talk about yes is his humility and uh, the one example of Namgongo Matters Day, the most recent yes, I had been part of the organizing committee from the start but two weeks to the Matters Day they realized that uh, they had somehow skipped the important committee on protocol and uh, when they mentioned that they need to put it on, everybody turned to Yes and said, you should handle that committee. Yes, I said, no. Let's call Mishach and ask him to chair protocol. I'll work under him. He's way older than me, but he submitted and accepted to work with me on that committee. That, the Yes, that we're talking about. I'll now ask the children. Uh, to come and uh, film on with um, Philmon probably knows much more than any one of us about Yes's death because they were together and um, well, let's listen to the children's eulogy. Uh, thank you very much, most of the ceremonies. I welcome you all. I really want to thank you for coming today to comfort us in this time of need. I really want to thank you all for coming today to comfort us in our time of need. Unfortunately, I don't know all the protocols, but I want to thank everyone from Chiti Nisachi, Kujat I also want to thank you, Your Grace, for that powerful sermon. I'm sure we shall heed it and keep strong. Uh, my name is Mugabe Philemon. I am the third born of Mr. Mwanji Zayese. Mm, unfortunately, eight years ago, we lost our first born boy, Mugabe Philip, and then I became, I became the first born son after that. Mm, my father, was a very hard working man when I was uh, when we were in between he got saved around 2007 when I was in S1 and uh, 
in between from S1 to S3, I was in the school at Makere College School. So every evening, he used to give us a hymn from Zabudi Bibili Kuminitano, which is the Orogendo Nokkoera Ruhanga, Work for the Night is Coming. It goes like this. Yeziri chemonoga o kore namani tande komo kashe she o tavo mwere mwa kando kore no mwihangwe o tatente wuka. I want to only use that verse as a sample, but for our friends here in Central, it means, loosely translated, wake up early and work hard. Start in the morning, don't be lame. Also, work in the afternoon, and even when it is nearing evening, still work hard. And he really embodied, he really embodied that anthem. He really embodied it. He was very gentle, loving, and he really doted on all of us, but not only, not only us, his children, but he really doted on everyone who was around him. He really loved the people. He really feared God, and he really loved the church. And we have really been thrust into a very steep learning curve which we pray we are given the strength to keep emulating and we ascend that curve. And uh, I would like to talk, I would like to talk about the incident because I know there are many questions. Mm, we had traveled to the village in Shemba. We had a memorial service for one of our fallen aunties, Kate Guma. And that evening, he also had installation of lions in Shaka, lions Bosheni, which ended at around midnight. I drove him back home, and we were supposed to wake up at four, set off, so that he can be able to reach the MDD gala that was going to be at the school, Nile High School, Mukono. So we woke up at around four. We did our preparations, we prayed, and we set off. The journey was a smooth one until, until we reached that place, Rela. It was about it was about morning because the sun was almost coming up. So I would say it was around seven. Now, uh, for me, I was in the back seat, so I don't, I don't remember what happened in front, what precipitated the accident. But what happened is that a motorcycle rider was crossing into our left-hand side from the right, and our driver, William Tomosime, unfortunately, didn't see him in time. And my father yelled, he yelled William's name, and that is what started everyone. Mm. Then I think I, I, what would have happened next is that William pressed hard on the brakes, but because uh, that place is somehow damp, when you, try, when you try to brake and it is damp, the wheels actually lock, so there is no friction to stop the wheels. So because of that film of water in between the tires, in between the tires and the tarmac, the car would, ju the car would just skid instead of stopping, and that is what happened. So the car overturned, 
and unfortunately it, and it overturned into an upside down position which was also happened to be in a swamp. The water gushed in very fast because after the initial disorientation, already the water, was, the water was up to my chest. But fortunately enough, for me, I think I was already in an upside. I was in the right. I was in a right side up position in the car, even though it was upside down. And actually, even before before the car overturned completely, the door actually opened by itself and two other passengers in the car, my uncle Tuesday and also my father's uncle Kashagode, were flung out of the car at a very high speed. But we want to thank God that he softened their landing and they managed to land actually, I think it was on grass. So while I was still in the car, I tried calling out to William and my dad. Unfortunately, my dad couldn't respond, but uh, William, the driver, could hear me and he responded. So I told him, William, we need to get out and help Danny. So I managed to unlock the, unlock the door and some good Samaritans had arrived. They pulled the door open after my initial portion. They pulled the door open against that weight of the water and I managed to get out. Then we also opened Daddy's door but unfortunately, the, uh, the seat belt was still on, so we had to go through a lot of hassle to get the seat belt off of him and pull him out, which took a long time. And also, after, after I came out, William also followed me. So I and William, the driver, got out of the car before my father could. So we pulled, we pulled him out, and he was... Uh, he had read the, he was turning cyanotic, so I tried to do CPR as well as give mouth to mouth resuscitation. Because we tried to, we thought he had drowned, so we wanted to expel the water out of his lungs so that he can breathe. No. In, that, in that process, a good Samaritan came with a vehicle and rushed us to Mkose Hospital. We are unfortunately on arrival. The nurses pronounced him dead. Uh, also, my, my, uh, the good Samaritan managed to take us all, all who are in the car apart from William who came later. But good enough, uh, my uncle Twesje and uh, Kashagode, my dad's uncle, they were both conscious, eh? they could talk because Kashagwe actually received the phone call. But for Uncle Tosuje, he was still, okay, he was still disoriented, but he was also conscious and breathing. So uh, I, put my, I put my SIM card in another phone and tried to call some people. I think I called mom, only some uncles and they were able to, and uh, the, first res the first responders were actually Uncle Joshua and Auntie Hope, who, had, who were traveling also back to the from the village and they saw the wreckage of the accident and came to the hospital. So when my mom came, uh, she, told, uh, she told us to take the body to Mulago for a post-mortem. Which is, which is what we did. So we traveled to Molago, we did the post-mortem. Mm. So uh, after the, the post-mortem was conducted and after two hours, the doctor said, after he gave us the report saying that uh, he was actually very perplexed by our report that he had been in an accident because he didn't find any internal injuries or anything else to indicate an accident. Uh, but he said, he said that he, the airways had been blocked off because my father was asthmatic and the stress of the accident petrified him so much 
that, they, that they, he got a severe asthma attack, which blocked off his airways, and it was already a non-oxygen deficient environment, because if, if he had been at least in air, some oxygen would have trickled through long enough to get us to the hospital. But because the, he was, it was an upside down and the head was first in the water, we couldn't, uh, and the airways were all closed. There was nothing we could do for him. For those who don't know asthma, it is like if you have nozzle congestion due to flu, it would be exactly like that, but here it is more severe in that it covers your whole respiratory tract, including even the functional unit of the lung. So the, uh, the doctor also found uh, more evidence of suffocation, like uh, he had a particular hemorrhaging in the eyes, because uh, when, you, when you get hypoxic, your brain, your brain and everything tries to send signals to keep you alive, but unfortunately the body gets so stressed that the capillaries burst. So he had particular hemorrhaging in the eyes, which showed that he had actually asphyxiated or suffocated. The doctor also said that that whole episode would have only lasted 10 seconds before it would have been fit. So I want to thank you all for coming and being with us in this trying time. Uh, JMS, I work at Joint Medical Store as a biomedical engineer. I want to thank them for coming. I saw our Director of Finance, Mary Katsime, and our Director of Biomedical Engineering, Kenneth Robango, and also my colleagues who I work with. I want to thank you all for coming. Unfortunately, I can't mention everyone who came, but I really want to thank you all for coming and being with us. Hmm? I want to talk more jolly about Dan. He was so selfless and so generous and so loving and all the messages I've been receiving, daddy was a personal friend, daddy was a personal friend, and I was like, how many personal friends are there? <laughs> because everyone, he touched everyone in their own unique way. He touched everyone in their own, in his own way. Every person who was coming to my messages was telling me a different story about him and everything i've just we have just been so overwhelmed with love and support from our family from our friends we want to thank you what the bishop archbishop said is true our father he used to tell us those who have not worked are not going to eat chores you do your work, you first supervises, you've done your work, that's when you eat. And that's how he embodied every single aspect of his life. He was so hard working and he instilled us, instilled into us hard, hard work, hard work. And, every, and he was so principled, so, so tough on us that he wa we have we wouldn't have been the people that we are we wouldn't have been the people that are standing here today if daddy wasn't our dad and we can't appreciate him more for having done that his birthday uh, 23rd march he we went to mukono and it was weird he said now I know you love me. Now I know Namuzak Muzik. And I was like, why, why is he saying that? What, what does it mean? God knows his things. And we, we. He loved people. And I've seen it with all the people that have come here so many people that have come you all love daddy 
you all loved us and we can't thank you enough for loving daddy and for being here for us in this trying time he really embodied everything that was good that was right he really loved god and he loved the church he always held you accountable he would call you on sunday he's like have you gone to church why haven't you gone to church you're supposed to be in church i mean this is what this is what the this is what the preacher said where i was in my church so even if you missed you never missed because he was going to send you a message about about the someone hmm? the you have been saying that he lived a very short life but all the achievements and everything he did his legacy it's like he it's like he knew what was going to happen it's like he was trying to do all of it at once before he went and i believe that everything that he has done we shall continue as a family my siblings he would have wanted us to be strong he would have wanted us to keep together and i know that daddy's love can never separate us god's love can never separate us from one another and i know that daddy we shall keep together and we shall we shall not disappoint you actually i forgot he always used to introduce me as his daughter who does law I forgot to mention my name. My name is Asimir, um, but not the daughter who does law. Because he was so proud. And I was supposed to graduate in November. I was supposed to come and talk to him about having the graduation in Mukono. And I was supposed to do that after the papers. And he had, he had told me, he had told all my friends, he loved my friends. He loved my friends. He would come to VD. He would remember all their names. I'm like, how do you remember? Even if the, the person has gone to see their parent, he's like, no, where is she? I want to see her. I want to see that friend of yours. He loved my friends. He loved my friends. And I know some of them are outside. They were all calling. They wanted to come and see him because that's the love that he... Philemon has said it, he loved us, his children, but he also loved people so much that everyone was so hurt when we told them the news. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. It really means a lot to me and my family that you are here to show us your support. You are here to show us your care. The messages I've received, everyone is really pulling together to show their love for, for my father. So, honestly, I, I just keep recalling happy memories. I kept berating all my friends with happy memories, just laughing. No one has lied. Dad loved God. As in, you, you, you could not, there's no scam you will pull that say, ah, today I'm sick. Ah, today, uh -uh. You'll be in the car at nine. If you're not in the car at nine, you're going to walk to church. And you're like this tall. And I'm not saying that St. John's Kamocha was far, but imagine how, like, you're six years old and they're telling you, if you're not in the car in 10 minutes, you're going to walk to church. He, he, it was, he was just that kind of person. He was very, he was a people person. I remember feeling a little bit resentful because every time we would be going to Mukono, I would feel like he's stopping every 10 meters to greet someone. I'm like, how do you know the whole Uganda? As, is it possible? How? He was such a lively person. One of my fondest memories of daddy is how he used to wake us up in the morning singing. He'd, you are deep in sleep, by the way. For this scenario, imagine yourself deep in sleep. You don't want to wake up. Then he begins, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a lovely day. And he's singing and he's dancing and you're like, why? But he had a lot of energy. He was a lively man. He loved church. 
even Amber is not lying. Honestly, he used to tell us that if you don't work, you shall not eat. I remember him always being like, what have you done today? And when I speak of him, I always remember how he used to say that, Muharawanj, please hold on fast to the Lord. Please hold on fast to the Lord. If you go to Nile High School, he had those poor values at the gate, actually. At the gate, because it's like, you need, people need to know what we stand for. One of them is God-fearing, but also among them is integrity. He would preach it. My daughters, you need to be integrity people need to trust you. You need to have your integrity. You need to be honest. You need to be hardworking. Honestly, when I think of him, he's like, he's not this mysterious father figure. He was my dad. He used to... He used to take me an amber. Personally, just the two of us, every, around, every other Sunday, walking around, jogging. Girls, girls, come and go. You jog, okay, it was not really jogging, it was walking, but we would walk around the whole neighborhood, Kololo, Bukoto, and you are talk, walking as you are talking. How was your day? What, what, what? You should, he's instilling his life lessons, making sure that no child goes through the cracks. He used to give each of us personal time. There was a time recently, quite recently, actually in COVID, when I called him crying. I had never done that. I was so sad. For reasons known to me, I'll keep the problem to myself, but I had called him crying, in tears, sobbing. I was like, Daddy, can you pray for me? He was like, Ingrid, what's wrong? Daddy, please, please pray for me. Then he prayed for me. Then he was like, but what was wrong? I'm like, no, it's fine. And that was the end of the story. He was that kind of person. He was just... He would give so much of himself and also expect so much from you. So, honestly, this is a, this is a loss. This is, it doesn't, it's just, no. But I want to thank everyone for their support. It has, it really means the world to us. Thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening to you all. Thank you for coming to be with us in your respective capacities. I want to talk about my dad. One day we were at a dining table and we were talking about someone who had passed away. So, he gave me one comment. Make sure you don't cry for me when I'm dead. I don't want to see you cry. So I'm trying to live to that. And make sure I don't feel sorry that I've gone away. Because I think I've done everything for you, and which is true. Dad was a caring person. We always want to know where where are you, what are you doing, what are you up to. He would call. And he passed on that love to us. Each time you travel, you travel, you would call you where have you reached, have you reached safely? Have you gone through the process? I don't know, whatever problem you had, he would make sure he inquired. He really loved us, the kids. He really loved us, the kids. I must repeat that. He loved his children equally. There's nothing like he loved this one more than the other one. Surprisingly, he transferred the love to my children. He really loved my children. In terms, I would be shocked by the things he would do for them. Dad, what do we call it in our language? The, this generation was a hustler. He knew how to look for money, if I can say that. 
that was the financial part of him. He knew how to look for the money. And the two years I spent with him during COVID, he taught me that skill. He one day asked me, you fear taking debts? Have you seen me die because I have debts? <laughs> so, he then reached a point of telling me, you need to get used to this life. Sometimes you need to learn that you need to borrow to fill up a gap and then you pay back and life moves forward. How are you going to run things if you fear taking debts? That was another, another part to educate me that you need to, what do we call it in Uganda? You look for money. Yes, that was him. I am glad I learned that skill from him. I believe I'll pass through this world even when he's gone. We acquired that from him. And he was honest. If you made him angry, I would move with him and, you know, someone has uh, said something about him who was so point blank, he would tell you, you, you said this about me, and it ends there, he doesn't keep it. It would end there, he would not carry it forward. The other thing I learned from him was tolerance. He was so tolerant. Very. Even the nonsense you'd think, no, if it was me, I would punish this person. He would give you a certain chance. Be patient with you. Until he's learned that you've, you've accepted your mistake and are willing to move on and do something better. That was that. Very tolerant. I want to thank the time dad, the dad for the time he spent with us. We didn't get time to thank him. It was so sudden, so abrupt. Didn't get time to say goodbye. You know, the day they got an accident, they woke me up from bed, actually. I started asking me, where is your father? I told him he has traveled. Because I think they thought I traveled with him. We were supposed to go to the village together, but had been down for two weeks. So, on Friday when they traveled, he came to my place early in the morning, sat me down, told me his problems. This one has not done this. This one has not done this. This one has not done this. Okay. He told me about his programs, where he was going, what they are going to do. Some of them, I knew them. And then he left. Some of the issues I sorted. Some we shall see after this. We shall, I guess we shall sort them. That was my personal friend. A very close friend of mine. We shared a lot. We talked a lot. We supported each other. Olive sent me money, I'm here. He knew I have that habit of saving money. I don't have fuel. You go and send him your friends. Olive this. I've lost a friend, it's very hard to lose a father. But I despite is to lose your own friend that you've been turning to, that you've been sharing your problems with, that you've been leaning on. I hope we go through this moment. The other day I was telling my mother, the stage where the actors on the stage were reduced, 
Shakespeare in his book, it's I think a play as you like it, he says the world is a stage, he refers it to a stage and we are all actors. We exist and others go to the stage. So dad has exited the stage. And we are left there to play our roles as characters. Munra in one of his books talks about our purpose in life. That's one of the questions Dad used to ask me. Find your purpose. Know what you want. Live to eat. Work on it. What do you want? What do you want to do? Be focused. Where are you going? You know? I don't know who will ever tell me those words again. I don't know, never tell me, look, I've not done this, I've not done this. But we thank God for the life he lived, the parenting. And I thank God that we've managed to be strong. As he had asked us. And I pray that he keeps us strong and sees us through this journey. We are all heading to the same road. The days we pray with him, and he'll be like, uh, uh, the people we stay with at home, he'll be like, Fiona. That was a beauty, that was a beauty. And before you're fidgeting, your watch is start singing. Ruanga, Torana, Tineka. in peace, Dad. We shall forever miss you. Thank you very much. I want to thank you again, especially Uncle Majesty, Uncle Asimwe, and Leon, John Mosco and Tangari, who are able to reach on the scene and help us with everything. Also, Uncle Munoni, Uncle Robert Munanura, they really helped us with everything. We've had, we haven't had to be stressed about also preparations. We were really hoping we'd get 40 more years with our father. We were really hoping to laugh and dance, make jokes, but unfortunately, he has been snuffed out before any of us are even ready. <laughs> we want to thank him for having followed Jesus' laws which was to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and also love your neighbor as you love yourself. We are praying that God receives his spirit and greets his old friend, gives him a room, and gives him a comfortable rest until we are able to join him. Rest in peace. We want to also thank our mother for having been strong. She has really comforted us. When I, when I, when I called her, I was crying, but I just said, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And she got there as fast as she could and helped with everything that was going on. 
the rest the rest the rest of the passengers are okay they only sustained superficial injuries but I know they are I know they are still conscious and they will get through but I want again I want to thank you for coming and being with us thank you so much thank you thank you very much Ramon and your sisters um, thank you for what you shared with us I'll now ask uh, Melda to come and speak to us abakubuza bwenshi no bashashura ba science ni njamwa abikurira so monas uh, ladies and gentlemen praise god praise god Usually, MC, my biggest uh, disappointment on such occasions is when MCs are hiring, especially children of the deceased, that they should keep time, speak very fast, summarize, so that uh, our government can find time. So I was dreading that you are going to tell my children to stop, and I thank you that you did not. Now, how can I... How do I even start? My sister Rosette is out by my side. But I want to start where my children left off. I want to st thank God very much for my children. You had them. If you had uh, four fours, you know, we, there were stories of this man from my place. He said, that he had a son who was in university. So if he was speaking some language, he's a biomed biomedical engineer. Uh, if he, she quoted you Shakespeare, because she's a teacher of literature, and the other one told you she's a lawyer, now the one who did not talk about herself is a medical student. They are all in their final years. So I think he, I want to, I'm not good at uh, protocol, and, and I never write speeches. I felt that one from day when I was born, so you'll bear with me if I jump here and here. I hope you get the message. So if Yese lived a short time, he lived a very short, very fruitful, very productive, very eventful life. So for me, I want to share the view that said, it doesn't matter how long you live, it is the quality of life. Now, the person who was not introduced in the family is Jared Mwishuka, and trust him, the yes spirit, he is not going to let himself be left out anyway. So he pulled himself out without being invited. I don't know what he will become, because you see the, the trend the family is taking. I met yes in the 90s when I came to university, actually in 1989 when I came to university and uh, there was Shema University Students Association. Um, I don't sure whether he recruited me or the adult detail is hazy but finally we worked, we worked very very closely together when he was the chairman of the association and I was the speaker. But that time we had a friend who was also from Shema. We shared. He was called Theodore Arinitwe. He passed away shortly after we wedded. So Theodore said, mm, what do you think of Yese? I think he's a good guy. He's like your type. He's developmental. You like development. Mm? You that you're a hard-working girl. If you meet a man who does not work very hard, you are going to stress. You need to get close to Yesse. I said, ah. Now, it, you know, for some reason, uh, we have another sister in the room of here. So we were many girls, eight to be precise, have idea. And we had three boys. So by some chance, I followed the boys. I don't know whether that's the reason, but from the, way, the day I was born, I confided in boys. 
So I trusted boys. So I trusted Arini to any he told me I can meet. Yes. And then I confided in another person who is who was my cousin, Benon Kachinda. I told you Arini uh, to a passed away shortly after we wedded in a motor accident and Benon Kajinda has just passed away. I'm sure his body is still warm as we talk. So I uh, have reason to mourn, yes, eh? but I also have reason to celebrate his life. I waited, I uh, listened to his children talk about him. That was the truth. You can summarize them in about three, three words. It is hard work, maybe two. It is hard work and, and service and God's work. Because when it, gave, it came to God, he gave up everything. He did God's work in some interesting ways. I remember asking the manager of Stan Big Mac, Bank Mkono, because he had uh, convinced Stan Big that they should not work on some days before he comes and prays for them. And they agreed. So I said, but someone who is not a, even a vicar at the next parish or chaplain at the next school, how did you enter this arrangement? <laughs> so, so he did God's work in all ways, in every way. He prayed for all of us. I'm not a, how should I say, a loud prayer. So sometimes I got surprised when we went together and before I even left the car, you know when you want to the, leave the car, you want to go to the room. And he goes to the room ahead of me and locks it for two hours. But we came together when he said, ah, ah, the Bible said you close yourself in the room and you pray. <laughs> and then when, when this concept of praying at the passage of time, he would wake up at three in the morning and then he would press the hand of, the hand of me and then he would pray God you know my wife bless her, cleans her I said what does this man see that I don't know <laughs> what that I need cleansing so life with yes was fun it was really fun and he because we were both hard workers because, so the time together was uh, Maybe not enough. But what he did in compensation, he valued the time together. If I sat there and talked to him, even if the cooking was not good, he didn't complain. Because I was with him. And so that time was shared together. My name is Imelda Tuanjirwe. So, of course, uh, shortly before I got married, I was uh, practicing, signing, using Mubanji's name. So when we got married, uh, Richard... Kaijuka. He gave us a check. He said, have you re uh, received a, a check on the day of our wedding? Have you gotten a check which is Mr. and Mrs.? So when I went out, he uh, said, uh, Mrs. Mbanji, he said, no, hold a minute. You see, names are important. People work for their names. I've worked for my name. I want you to go out and work for your name. But that's a decision that, by the way, sometimes almost cost us uh, death by stoning. Uh, J.V. Tangare remembers the story when we landed in Oran, Algeria, one time, and we found the International Association had booked each of us a double room, a double for Yese, a double for myself. So we went to the reception. We said, no, no don't worry, this is okay. We can share. I remember Algeria is an Arab Muslim country. The receptionist here stood straight and he went red. <laughs> Fortunately, that year, Ryan Yese was the president. So as we talk, he said, I think those, these people don't appreciate that I am the president and you are the first lady. And because the receptionist didn't pick English, he picked this word, president and first lady. The entire hotel panicked. So he's uh, calling on this line and pressing on this, and me when I hear, he said, oh, I'm the president, I'm the president, and all of a sudden someone is passing here, someone is passing here, and this is putting the bag, this is getting our names, and 
that's how we ended up sleeping together, otherwise the name was going to cost us a few. I want to thank all of you. They've told you the story of how yes, he died, and, uh, but one thing that I want to reiterate is how he worked very fast. He could start projects, seven projects in one week, and if he starts one and it does not work, he leaves that one. If he cut, puts trees and the market falls, he cuts trees when they are about to be cut and then plants coffee and coffee if it is, gets, uh, he cuts coffee and plants bananas. And that was yes. So he, that's how he accumulated very many projects. Actually, if you went to his net worth, I don't know, but the dates, I'm not going to, I mean, I want to believe that the guy is um, loaded the dates we shall see about that. Yes, I went out and made friends. The guy has friends, left, right, center, and remembered people. I mean, I, I don't know whether I love my children, but I think I take things for granted. Sometimes I may know he's in, she's doing medicine, I may not tell you now which year, which semester. <laughs> but yes, I will know all their names, or my sister's children, he will know who got this grade last year and who repeated the class and what was on the report because every time holidays begin, he will call and he will find out. So he had details and remembered dates. He was a scientist somehow, but remembered dates. It's like, you told me this on that day. Remember, we were climbing up Murago here. And I said, but me, I don't remember that. <laughs> so it was fun getting along with him, and it was the drive, I think, that I wanted to keep going. I don't know how we shall move forward, but there are a few things he believed in. For instance, he would be surprised, children, are you there? He would get so surprised when educated people failed to get along, because for him, he believed once you are educated, you know the motto of Nile High School is education is the base. Now, if you have the base, everything else will just fall in place. If he had left me drunkards, and if he had left me people who had, but he left me professionals. Professionals, education, medicine, law, engineering. What more as a woman would I be asking from God? So I want to thank God for Yese, for the life that we spent together, for the friends he gave us, for the children he gave us, for the finances, for the property, for the knowledge of God, and for the all of you that have come to support you. Thank you so much. Uh, friends who are running out of time who are really really running out of schedule and I will plead that the few speeches that are coming next you use a maximum of two minutes we need to be out of this place in the next 10 minutes maximum 15 but we've actually been given 10 minutes to be out of here so may I now ask Canon Apollo Buzari on behalf of uh, the Kampala chapter Western College Diocese to come and quickly give us your message, maximum two minutes, and we'll be moving on to the next. Allow me to remove this mask since I'm far from you. All Saints Cathedral, we thank you for hosting us and giving us this time to mourn our beloved friend. Uh, because of time we have, St. John's Kamocha, because it was a struggle in love, whether to put them here or whether we go to St. John's. Because of time, we being given two minutes, I wish to recognize you. That's because of time that you have not come here. It's not our making. 
may you stand up for recognition. St. John's Kamocha. Thank you, thank you very much. We believe the church is one. Allow the master of ceremonies to invite the executive of Western Kore Kampara Diocese to come here. My speech is very short. Those who have come will represent others. We have the Chancellor, Western Kore Diocese, Marvin. We have the head of Leite and my deputy, head of Leite. Now, what do we talk about ESA? ESA would have been here as the treasurer of West Ankore Diocese Kampara chapter. But before us, we can wave to him. You can move. We are giving a testimony on Yesi. Yesi has been a Christian soldier. He married and family. You have lost, but we have lost. When you look at all of us, we have lost. So we share the grief with you. Yesi has been the treasurer of Kampala chapter. He has been a very handy person to deal with. Yesi helped the diocese when we are consecrating our bishop. A very good mobilizer. A very good timekeeper. A man who ever smiled. I wish if he was here the atmosphere would be different. Yes, he helped us in developing Ankara Western University. Yes, he is the man who would go to every person of the caliber to collect the debt or to fundraise for the university. Yes, he was a good mobilizer when we are making the house of the Bishop of West Africa Diocese. And we believe his grace that it is one of the houses of the bishops of, of the, the whole province. We have been moving on to Katung Heres, Katung Specialized Hospital for Women and Children. He has been at the center. So we confirm and affirm that yes, has been the church. We are missing him. And when we live in this world, it is the Lord's. And even when we die, we go to the Lord. So we assume and we believe that Yesi has left this place and has gone to another home because they all belong to the Lord. What if he wants him to mobilize his people, his kingdom? As a chapter we have, and we are still raising the funds, it's our foreign friend. We have raised 10 million here, and we request that the family member comes for it. And our contribution is toward the house or the casket where our friend is going to live forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Canon Apollo. Um, Robert, Robert and Paul, Muije Umizi Narya Yakaya Kamanire, but here is the Gamba Kwan. Thank you, everybody. To me, I've start, I've, I'm standing here to appreciate whoever has saved this life. Just want to give you two scenarios, just two stories. Then you give me a division of yesterday. Uh, I've lived with yesterday since 
when I was in senior one until I finished university. So when he bought the plot in Mkono, we made a farm. Whenever I could go in a whole day, I would be at that farm. I would not go to the village. We call it Okshusha, Kuechukuku. So you'd go to, to, U, to UEB. When he comes next day, Abara Ebgubina Ashusha, one, two, three, four, at home meter. Well, now, if I have done a hundred, say, no, 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 let's not work done tomorrow. So you can imagine, if you know, today, when you come tomorrow, you find the you So if he comes a week, you would see a level of what there. You would know you have not worked. That's yes. When I went to the university, I, I, I went, uh, he asked me, do you have a girlfriend? I told him, I have a friend, but not a girlfriend. He told him, bring them. I told him to come with you. And he, he was very strategic in his seating. What he, what he did, he sat on the way. He said, we don't run away. He made us sit on the other side. June was there. The late film, film was there. Amber and Ingrid were young. And they know those friends. Do you know what he did? He put a, 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 a cassette? TV. Those days called TV. Those, those old model. And he put in a film of Rutaya. Do you know Rutaya? Feel going Rutaya? HIV. And it was boring. I said, let me go for it. He said, no, 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 don't, don't you worry. He called Paul. Paul, bring for us water. That was the first year at the university. And he watched the whole thing and finished it. When after finishing, he, he took us out and we, and we drank and we enjoyed it. Like, and he go back home. That meant a lot. When I was at the university, I went to a club. I found one of our lecturers. He went and told the What he did, he went in the village and brought my mom. As I was still in class like this, my mom, I saw my mom in class like this. He pulled me with a tie up to down. That was the way Yesa was punishing someone who's, not, who's doing what he supposed to be doing. So I want to be who is here. Please, can you give me a definition of Yesa in a single word? The way I'm dressed, I'm very disorganized because he made me disorganized. He told me on, 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 on Saturday, Papa, one day I will disorganize you. Ask him, what are you meaning? Because I was with him on the, on the functions. So when they called me, they said, I've got a problem. I called him. And he told me, but I think, I think Robert, you lied to me, you knew something, but he didn't tell me. But I followed up. When they told me, when June told me that this has died, I stood up, where, what I was doing, I came with this trouser, I don't have a pant, and this shirt. And that's how I went to mourn until I, started, I, I drove a car up to where and it was, and I went to one of our brothers, he's still from Lago. That's where I've been since morning. And he won't be fine. So I want everybody, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. But I want Robert to finalize everything because he's the, he's the only brother we have left in town. The one I know. These are guys who have made me grow, see what I am. I'm called Palm Sings. I work with Mars Tops. I'm a social worker by profession. But these days I'm practicing public health. I want to calculate the daily, the day this has lived, and the extent he has died. I will give you that calculation, and I will know what this was. Thank you. I thank you very much, Paul. I know we are short of time, but just one or two statements. First of all, we want to, as a family, we want to thank you for grieving with us, for being with us, for supporting us. And uh, it was hard, especially, to come up with uh, today and uh, the program, especially because the children were still at school and doing exams, but we want to thank them and I think they have forgiven their uncle and others who made a decision that we shall continue and shall not hold you long. We don't want to hold you long here after, but I wanted to ask, as somebody said we were for the memorial service of my in-law, the wife of my young brother Richard, and in the compound I stood and said, I hate two things. One, death. The other, COVID. But when we were having lunch, let us say said, the Kaguman was even to be our hunger. So I want to apologize to God. And really to quote what the bishop said, wounded healers, because me, I think I'm a wounded sinner, because I've questioned, especially on part of the family, why all this on us? God forgive us.
because we have asked you questions and I know even the bishop said he also asked but why was it his decision why at this time as a family it is too much accidents too much but we ask God and we thank you because you always support us and I know that we shall be strong we shall bury on Thursday we shall travel tomorrow and we expect many of you to join us please join us Yese has done very many things the future of Yese and his legacy lies with us the lions if everybody were a lion worked as hard as Yese everybody in Uganda would be a lion if everybody did what Yese was doing very many things would change so the legacy and who can carry forward Lion Imelda you are here the lions you are here the family we are here all of us the church he did so much for you church let's pray for this family so that we can be strong and encourage one another to live on my name is Robert Mnanura I'm acting director of prisons in charge of engineering and production and I had wanted just to introduce one person who is our family Mzei Mzei Kashagure where are you? the maternal uncle this one survived with Yese in the accident just has a small wound on the head and he's okay I had asked him that I would only just introduce you to these people but this is the family please wave at these people and just say thank you thank you very much I'll cut it short there and let's wish my brother and everybody's friend a good rest thank you very much uh, Robert Talking Lions, I will now give two minutes to the district governor. Only, I must apologize, the president, Kampala Central, we will have more speeches in the village, but I'm really pressed. I'm really pressed. We will now ask the district governor to give us the final remarks, and then we will conclude this. Thank you. The church and all the clergy. Imelda and the family Lions and Leos fellow mourners My name is Among Inapuru Christine the district governor district 411B I'm just 5 days old as a governor. The late Yese last spoke to me on the first, congratulating me as the new governor. And he had pledged to work closely with me. I had known him way back in 2004 when I took Peso children to study at Nile High School. It's a great loss. We shall miss him. Thank you for mourning him as an educator, mourning him as an entrepreneur, mourning him as a Christian. And when I saw Father's Union, and Mother's Union here, I said we must emulate in the footsteps of the late Yese. Service, service, he did it. I'm not going to spend time talking about him. I bring to you greetings of condolences from High Excellency, the Vice President. I was supposed to be with her in Moyo to bury the Vice Chancellor Christine Drozoa, but I told her I will have to be in Shema to bury this great man whom I have missed to work with, and yet I benefited from the children that went through Nile High. I'm going to ask immediate past district governor to talk about the late because he knows a little more than me about him. 
ಜೆಪಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಗವರ್ನರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಶೋರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಟೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರೋವರ್ ದೇಮ್ ಸಿ ಅಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ರೋವರ್ ಸೊ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ವೆರ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಸ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅವರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಎಸ್ ಎ ತ್ರೀ ರೋವರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅ ಮೂವ್ ತ್ರೀ ಟು ಯು ಒನ್ ಟೂ ತ್ರೀ Thank you very much remain standing we are now going to do a roll call normally we do that i may not call everybody but i will call a few then when i call your name you say present line imeda tonjirwe line christine amongin present line robert munanura line honare weshemba gine Ryan Porendi Arugahi Ryan Dr Lawrence Mujisha Ryan Yese Mubangizi Ryan Yese Mubangizi Ryan Yese Mubangizi Ryan San Friends Ryan Yese is no longer with us May your soul rest in eternal peace Thank you very much and thank you church for the patience. We have several messages but I'm not going to read any. We will read these messages in Shema and we appreciate and acknowledge those of you who have stood with us and sent us these messages. Once again, thank you so very much and may the good Lord bless you all. Yeah, let us appreciate that Ebusi has done a very tremendous job. Wewale and uh, in a special way we want to to appreciate to appreciate you for being patient and uh, of course to let us know that uh, all saints cathedral it has different programming and as i speak now we have penetrated like for 40 minutes for the next service which should be on and so we want to extend our apologies to the management but we appreciate you for being uh, patient with us I'm going to ask uh, one of the family member to come for this. We've been able to contribute uh, in our offer to the total collection is uh, 5 million 169,500 shillings. God bless you. Yes, bless you. Uh, thank you so much and uh, I want to appreciate the Lord for the the pastoral team that have stayed with us. to this very moment and therefore we have already received the benediction uh, from his grace but his grace won't stop us to to say this prayer can we bend our heads and we pray lord we thank you so much thank you for an opportunity that you accorded your servant the foreign hero and lion Uh, the late yesse mubangizi kamanyire lord thank you for the accomplishments that you have enabled him lord to touch during his earthly life thank you for the lives that he has touched and has impacted thank you jehova elohim jehova shama jehova arshadai jehova nisi for the family for the friends for the beautiful remarks and speeches uh, that have been given on him and so we do want to celebrate his life and we pray that lord now this your servants who are here each one of you i pray friends that the, that the lord comfort you may the lord strengthen you may the lord protect you and provide for you and those of you are in need and those of your relatives who could be sick his word tells us in psalm 103 verse 3 that he is the lord who forgives us our sins and he heals all our sicknesses and so we send forth his word to bring healing in the lives of those who are key and special to you and so lord we also pray for all the arrangements like we have already prayed of traveling of of the service tomorrow at 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 Emmanuel Church Kaboy and then for the final send off on Thursday all the mobilizations and the arrangements 
we submit you that lord indeed you perfect them we bless you thank you for the beautiful moment you have given us here to talk about him thank you for the message from his grace and now go with us in the name of lord god the father lord god the son and lord god the holy spirit go to tendereza yesu ore mwana kwandika yesu musa sai kuna sisa nevasa yesu mulokozi we're going to stand up and the worship team or the choir will lead us in that recession him umunseji twinena ku kongomunsi yo muiguru titorijishangayo Oh, we 